Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Venturist Podcast. I wanted to do a follow-up episode with Mike Anderson about the new ideation incubator that Proto Ventures is launching on October 4th. We had a great info session last Friday where a number of questions came up around time commitment, around what we're going to be covering from a syllabus standpoint, around basically who should be applying around what different stage. So if you're curious about this, if you have an idea, maybe you're somewhat further along, you're curious whether or not to apply, this episode we cover a bunch of those details. We, we talk about more info sessions that are gonna be happening on Fridays, so we have the details for that. You can look in the show notes as well. We talk about time commitment requirements or, or even suggestions. We're kind of, we're basically gonna make this as flexible as possible for you. We talk about who should apply at different stages of your idea, whether you have an idea or not. And then we actually go through the syllabus. So we take the whole second half of this episode and just go session by session so that you can learn about what exactly we're going to be covering so that you can show up to some of those sessions. If you get into the incubator or if you can audit them, we're going to try to make this as accessible to as many people as possible. So if you're listening, you can also watch by visiting wclittle.com. There I'll have more extensive show notes to the different things that we talk about today. And if you're watching, you can always listen anywhere that you get your podcasts. You can search for ventures and it should show up. Now we do do some screen sharing in here so you can always flip back and forth. But even if you're just listening, because I know most people just listen, uh, we try to just get clarify around time zones and, 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 and use words to describe what's on the screen. So it's not the end of the world if you're not watching this, but uh, it's gonna be entertaining either way. So with that, please enjoy this conversation with Mike Anderson. All right, Mike, welcome back to the show. Hey, Will. So for those who missed the previous episode, you want to just do a quick recap. What are we doing? What is this incubator? Launches October 4th. What's it all about? So we have an ideation incubator that's for founders in that those early stages. Um, they may have no idea and we help find an idea. They may have an idea that we help validate. They may even be further along where they feel like, hey, I've got a product that's about to come out, but they might have missed some of the really crucial steps or might be unaware of the pitfalls ahead of them. So there's really those three categories of people. And honestly, if I was uh, getting ready to launch a product right now, I'd probably still take it because there's so much good info and, and good relationships and community here. Yeah. Yeah. And we have a good handful of projects that if you want to be a CEO, right, if you, if you, if of, a, of an existing idea that's being incubated out, this is potentially a fantastic resume builder for you to get experience in, in, in the front lines, working with a, a team of people, a venture capital group in full on startup land. And so if you think that you might have uh, three, three attributes of the CEO, you're, you can cast vision, you can build a team that's performant and you can ensure you never run out of money. If you feel like you're that type of person, then just apply for this if you're at all interested in the earliest stages of, of the incubator. So then Mike, how are you thinking about this in terms of um, what the outcomes for this incubator will be? Yeah, so a uh, founder that comes through this is going to be able to validate their idea with both um, the market, like do people want this? Um, uh, but also uh, with users to say like, hey, is this a problem that people actually have? And then, uh, and then through that process, you're going to be able to take that idea and prove that people want it and need it and people are willing to pay for it. And then that's gonna give you um, kind of the first, uh, the first pass at how do I sell this thing to people? How do I market it? What is the minimum viable product that I can make that will fulfill that need um, so that my, my startup, if it's a seed, can, uh, can start to grow and start to bloom as opposed to uh, grow and just not have the right resources and fall over really quickly after, thereafter. Yeah, yeah. So you'll get, you'll, you'll basically be at a, ploy, a place where you'll have a clickable prototype in Figma or something like Figma. You'll have a lot of market validation or not. <laughs> you know, you may need to pivot your idea significantly if you don't, uh, and, and, and that's usually the case, right? And, and you'll have a, a community of people, other, other early stage startup founders that you'll get to know. You'll get to be a part of the Proto Network, the Banyan Dow Network, collaborations with Figment Capital, collaborations with Dow House. I will link to our previous episode that has fuller details of all of that 
um, in the show notes. So be sure to check that out if you missed the first one. But for this episode, I really have four things I want to talk about. And I'll just, I'll lay them out now so you, uh, the listeners can know where we're going. One, we have these info sessions. Last week, we had one on Friday. This week, it's going to be Friday at 12 p.m. Pacific. We'll put the links in the show notes to it. Um, so I want to talk about these info sessions as point number one. Point number two, there were a number of things that came out of this the, the Q&A session last Friday, which I think was enormously helpful. And that was questions around time expectations from people who apply and what is the right stage. So some people are at different stages of their own idea. What is the right stage to, 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 to apply that? And then the fourth one is, I just wanna pull up the syllabus because I think that was super helpful in our last session, our last Q&A session there. And so people can see specifically what dates in Q4 we're talking about what topics. So if we tackle those four plus anything else you want to talk about, Mike, I think that this will be a good podcast recording. So let's start with the first one. Can you tell us more about these info sessions? What, what who should attend? How often are we going to be running them leading up into the uh, to the event? Let's go from there. Yeah. So between now and when we when we begin, um, we're going to have a Twitter Spaces that takes place from noon to one, where we're in general talking about the incubator, um, startup founding, how to get things going at the earliest stage. And that's um, kind of giving. That specific time. time. Yep. Um, and then just immediately following that at 1 p.m., we're going to have a, a welcome slash info session um, so that the founders can um, can understand exactly what we're, we're going to be doing, look at the syllabus. We can answer questions, get to know each other a little bit. Um, and I'm also following up with founders to schedule 15 or 30 minute uh, one on ones with them and their team. Um, to help make this as smooth of a process as possible. And, and, and we're really a community-based uh, VC group. And so we want to know people. Like we're not just in it to see people on spreadsheets. Like we're in it for the relationship and in to help uh, along the ride. So we'll be meeting folks and, and all of us getting prepared for what we're about to undertake in Q4. Okay, so how can people get more information about these info sessions? Obviously, I will put some info in the show notes, but what is the way to get involved with them? Is it Do they need to go apply? Is there a way to get in? to get invited to the info sessions without applying? How does that work? Yeah, so the easiest way to do it is to go apply. Um, I'm going to be sending, for instance, an email today uh, to everybody who signed up um, okay. with all the next steps. Um, and also, uh, everyone that signs up will be getting that email within about 24 hours of them applying. Okay, so just apply. Even if you're just curious, just apply. You can, at the end of the day, you can submit another application later if, you're, if you have more of your ideas, but just get on our mailing list by telling us your LinkedIn, a little bit about yourself and, and, and we'll go from there. So then yep. how, many, how many of these, are we gonna do these every Friday uh, yeah. leading to October 4th? My plan is just to do it every Friday and I may keep doing it every Friday so that okay. we can get ready for the folks that are gonna be ready in Q1 uh, to do this. And so, yeah. Got it, okay. All right, so that's good point number one. Point number two then, let, let's talk about, um, let, let's maybe reverse the order that I said before. Let's talk about who should apply because we had a number of different questions from different founders at different stages of the ideation. And I think it's important to kind of go into that, go into that nuance. How, how would you answer that? I would say if you don't have revenue yet from your product being in the market and people paying for it, I would say this is a great spot for you to be because this is a spot for you to refine your ideas uh, like come up with your idea, refine your idea, prove your idea, and then start to build a prototype and start to build an MVP. And so uh, assuming that you don't have a product out in the market that's getting money and and is already on its way, um, this would be a great spot for you to, to come be a part of it. And even if you're a little bit further along, I think you're going to find um, one that there's lots of, of holes in in your experience, unless you've done this you know, 20 times, uh, like Will has at this point in time, there's going to be lots of wisdom that you can get and lots of connections through those relationships. You're also going to be able to help a lot of the other founders who are in this because you are farther along and you've got stories to share. And you might find some really key uh, members for your team actually within this group, because I anticipate that we'll find some people who either have similar ideas, similar passions, or just really like each other and say, hey, we'd be better doing this together than alone. And so I think it's a really good community-based place for anyone pre-revenue. Now, this point number two is related to point number three, because if if you've done a lot of the things already, right? And I, I think I agree with Mike. If you if you have a product um, that maybe is not totally complete, but you still want to like really refine your idea, 
you can still participate in the cohort. You just, there may be some topics that we cover that you've already thoroughly already done for your startup, um, which is fine because then your time commitment for the, for the cohort doesn't need to be as high, right? But I would say the core population that we're targeting for this cohort are probably people that are still at an idea and haven't really started building the product or haven't started building their team out. Maybe they've done a couple interviews here or there, or, or even if they're brand new to it, right? This is, that's probably the core of it. But if you're a little further along, we still want you to participate. If anything, you can help be a peer to those that are maybe a little bit further or a little bit earlier in their journeys as we kind of learn and, and grow together. Is there anything else you'd add to that, Mike? I mean, I think it makes a lot, a lot of sense. And I think that a lot of founders, they, they get such a clear vision in their head of, this is going to be awesome. I love this. And it's almost like they go into a casino and they say, all my money on black. <laughs> right. And, and, and they're like, they might not be wrong that it's a great idea, but they don't know. They haven't talked to the customer. They haven't validated. They haven't validated how to sell to the customer. So there's all these pieces that, um, that even if you feel really confident, it's really good to go through this process of, of making small bets and incrementing. And that's really what the scientific method is, right? Small bet, test it. Did I get a return? Bigger bet, bigger bet. And that's what um, the process you've created helps them do. Yeah, and we have some exciting guest speakers that we will be revealing as the dates come closer uh, that are different experts at different parts of uh, the syllabus that we'll show here in a moment. But before we get there, let's talk about time requirements. We know everybody's busy. There was a number of questions in our Q&A last Friday on this. Um, what kind of time expectation should we have should people be thinking about as they're as they're applying for this incubator? Yeah, that's great. Uh, do you mind if I share my screen real quick and yeah, uh, let's do it and jump into this? Yeah. So what we're looking at is we're looking at 16 sessions across three months, basically October and then into the beginning of December. We're going to be meeting uh, Tuesdays at noon and Thursdays at noon. Um, we yeah, estimate uh, that the class part Pacific time. Yeah, we estimate yeah, yeah. That most the class, people just listen to it, which is fine. If you're listening, obviously yeah. you can jump over and watch this screen share. But if you're listening, let's, yeah, let's, it's again, Tuesdays and Thursdays at 12 p.m. Pacific time, we'll make sure to get you those details. We estimate that the class and Q&A type times are going to be roughly an hour, but then there will be an additional hour on the back of that for co-working and answering questions and, and getting into to those kind of depths. And in addition to that, I'm going to have office hours available so that I can help you and your team work through this. Um, and so twice a week, I'm going to have 90 minute sessions. And then also I'm going to supply one-on-one uh, -on -one sessions. So think about it like the minimum requirements to be part of the class is roughly two one hour sessions. But if you need to, if you're traveling, if you have other uh, business things that come up, um, you can always catch those uh, after we've recorded them. Um, it's just, it, it'll be beneficial if you try yeah. to keep up with the rest of the cohort. Yeah. All right. So to recap in this, again, this may be overwhelming, especially, you know, you're busy, you have a day job, et cetera, et cetera, but you're really excited about an idea or jumping into an idea. Tuesdays and Thursdays at 12 p.m. Pacific time. There are some of the dates we, we won't be meeting to allow more time to build certain things. So we'll go through the syllabus here in a moment. Um, and then there's office hours, Tuesdays and Thursdays from 10 to 11.30 a.m. Pacific time, where you can schedule one-on-one -on -one time with Mike or potentially others in the incubator. And uh, But if that sounds like a ton, don't worry about it because we actually want to err on the side of ensuring that you can be a part of this cohort asynchronously, if you, even if you only have limited time, because we don't want to actually have too much time expectations from you. We'd rather you apply and then put together the best possible cohort of people and people that are auditing it at different levels based on their time commitments. So, so we don't want that to be a barrier for you. Please go ahead and just apply so that you can learn more uh, and, and we can talk with you leading up for, for this event. Anything else you'd add to that from a time commitment standpoint? I mean, I think that's right on. And I think part of becoming a founder is learning how to take on progressively more and more. And so, uh, and so that's not a bad thing, right? Like if you look at it and say, hey, this is gonna be hard, you're kind of in a spot where you have to say, okay, well now I'm gonna have to figure out how to level up my game so I can make space for it. Cause that's gonna happen all the time when you're founding a company. <laughs> that's right, that's true, <laughs> that's true. Yeah. All right, so let's walk through the syllabus here. Um, October 4th, October 6th, 11, 13, 18, 20, 25, 27. So we're hitting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We're hitting all eight sessions, Tuesdays and Thursdays in October, um, running through the idea, market, team, 
surveys, interviews, vision and branding and, and writing your landing page, uh, right? Especially specking out your landing page. So this will be the first session, right? We'll have an opportunity to get to know each other. This will be a little bit of an extended time um, and really talk about different aspects of, of an idea, right? If, Mike, if you wanna scroll down a little bit for those that are watching, it's, it, we're really all the way down to the, the, the details of the, of the idea. Keep going a little bit. We're at the end here. Oh, 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 sorry. Okay. The details of the ideation, right? We're gonna walk. We're, we're gonna walk through. Um, oh. oh, yeah. There you go. I we're see. gonna walk. We're gonna walk through the problem and opportunity, um, insights, why now, solution. Um, talk about Simon Sinek's material of why, how, what. Um, and it's gonna be sh basically very short kind of lecture uh, teaching, and then just tons of Q and A. In fact, the shorter the teaching, the better Q&A to really digest this material. And again, for those of you that might be a little bit further along with your idea, really hitting and, and learning about problem insight solution and then why, how, what just helps frame how you're thinking about your idea because everything that you start doing with, with your market analysis and interviews and everything is going to, you're going to go back to your original idea and you're going to keep refining it over and over and over. And, and even as your startup scales and, and you have traction, even into like raising a B round and beyond, you're always iterating on this because you need to get better and better at communicating your value to every stakeholder in the way they need to hear it. Yeah. So our second session, we're going we're gonna to dive into market analysis, uh, competitors, revenue model, right? There really are a finite number of revenue models out there. So you can kind of think revenue model and market and stage as a, as a, as a matrix. And then... There are tons of examples of companies that have gone from idea to very, very large successful exit or IPO with that revenue model in that market uh, at, the, at the different stages of growth. So we're going to talk about that. But a lot of what you don't necessarily hear when you when you take a business class in, in, in college or whatever is the is the analysis of are there sufficient margins in your market? So. We're going to talk about that. This is again rubber meets the road. Maybe maybe a lot of you have taken classes in college and entrepreneurship or whatever, or you've listened, done Y Combinator startup school, or listened to a bunch of online content about it. This is rubber meets the road from a team of us that have built multiple multiple companies at the earliest earliest stages, one of which that is now worth over a billion dollars. So we've been we've been through this dozens, if not hundreds, of times, and it's real rubber meets the road information that you'll be getting in this session. Uh, and then, and yeah, this, this is a long, longer session. So your customer profile is obviously a big deal. Regulatory gotchas. We won't get into all this now, but just know that session two is going to hit a bunch of that stuff. Um, session three, we're going to hit the team. And by the team, it's more than just your co-founders. It's who, who, what kind of contractors or venture partners do you have? Advisors, what, how do you deal with equity with them? investors, how do you deal with terms and equity with them, even at the very earliest stages, you're going to have a team of cheerleaders around you that's essentially your posse, right, you're going to want to send regular email updates to your crew, there's all kinds of best, best practices around how to form your team. And we're going to be doing that in the third session. Mike, you want to talk about session four? Yeah, so um, as we do surveys, we're wanting to learn, and we're wanting to put our own biases at the door for a minute. Right, and so what we'll be teaching through is how to design a smart survey and uh, avoid the pit pitfalls. You don't want to uh, you don't want to ruin your own experiment. So we're going to help you learn how to do that, um, and then how to execute actually getting people to fill this out and follow up. Um, and so we'll be working together to get all of that into one place. And the cool part is you, all, everyone else in the cohort, and probably even some of the people that are auditing it, they're going <laughs> to they're going to take your survey. So you're instantly going to have 20 other, at least 20 other people that are going to give you feedback. Now, they may not be in your customer profile, which will in and of itself be interesting, but you'll at least start gathering some data and some gut checks from people that are also thinking the same way. Absolutely. Yeah. So session five is when this is the, this is real. This is important. How cert, you can get some things done with surveys, but surveys are basically a hook into the interview. And how to design a smart interview and avoid pitfalls 
around who to talk to, how to talk to them, what questions to ask. So you're really learning. I mean, this is, I, I got a PhD in bioengineering. It's been about 10 years in an academic uh, research environment. And it was all about how to ask good questions and learn things from data and then publish papers based on what we learned from that data. That level of rigor in startup land is badly needed. And we're, we're going to teach you everything you possibly can know about uh, interview design, uh, uh, asking the right questions so that no matter the result, you're going to learn something in interesting so you can maybe pivot your idea or pivot your understanding of what a customer profile is or pivot your understanding of the market, pivot your understanding of the legal or regulatory landscape, et cetera, or your, revenue, or your different financial models, et cetera, et cetera a lot rests on the interviews. That's why when you hear people in startup land that says, just go talk, I mean, if you go through Y Combinator, those a huge amount, what they have to tell you to do is just go talk to customers. The more you talk to customers, the better, but there's a nuance about how to do that when you're at the idea stage, because when you're in Y Combinator, you already have a company worth $5 million at least. So that's what's, that's what's gonna be, be unique here. And then we'll have fishbowl interviews in this session and this is, this is really kind of a, a very important part of this initial incubator are these interviews. And you'll probably be con continue to do interviews throughout the rest of, of, of this incubator and, and future uh, stages of your company as well. All right, so then session six, this is key. If those of you who have not read any of Jim Collins material, he's the gentleman who wrote Good to Great, Built to Last, number of different books, right? Entrepreneurship, like 30, 30, 40 years ago, he wrote a book on entrepreneurship and recently published his second version of that called Beyond Entrepreneurship 2.0. And in that book, he clearly articulates, recaps, and, and redefines how he talks about vision, which is a combination of your values and your beliefs, your purpose, and your mission, or what he calls the big, hairy, audacious goals, the, the BHAG. In startup land, you talk, you hear a lot, even in business, you hear a lot about mission and vision and values and, and all these. And it's very actually confusing because people use those terms differently. We're going to teach the nuance of how people use the terms differently, but also say and highly recommend how Jim Collins goes about uh, recommending for entrepreneurs to, to, to talk about their vision. Because as a startup CEO, clearly being able to articulate and communicate your vision, i.e. your values, beliefs, your purpose, and your mission is so fundamentally important. So this, is, this session is worth its weight in gold and will be obviously a very important part of this conversation. Mike, you want to talk about briefly the branding session, session number seven? Yeah, so, so then we'll be moving into branding, how to take that, uh, those beliefs and mission and vision that you have and translate those into a, a visual brand that communicates as much as possible about who you are, what you're doing, um, and how your product's going to serve folks. And, uh, and when you start off from the solid ground of what your values and beliefs are, even as your ideas change, it allows your branding to be able to become more and more of a charged object. Think about the Nike symbol. It's mm. just a symbol, but it's charged with emo emotional value. Mm. Uh, we'll be teaching on how to do that, even from the earliest stages. Um, yeah. Good. So then the next couple sessions, session eight, session nine, this is all about landing page, learning how to use Figma to design your landing page, architect it. Um, uh, there's, a, there's a lot here that we think that even if you're a non-technical person, you should at least be familiar with how to do this. So that if, even if you have to pull in a product person or you have to pull in a, a web, de web designer, um, that you're gonna be able to actually do this effectively. But this is an important part of like, we're actually building here, right? We're, you're gonna get a domain, you're gonna get a logo, you're gonna get, uh, a landing page, you're going to start driving traffic to it. We're here to help facilitate you doing those things. And it's not going to be easy. This is going to be a lot of work, right? Uh, it's going to be as much work as you're willing to put into it. Again, I want to come back to the time commitment thing. You can just kind of go through this course as like a student where you're just consuming the material, but we really want you to learn and do, right? That learn, do cycle uh, is, is really an important part of this. Any, anything else you'd, you'd add about the yeah language. just being being able to mock up what you see in your head so that someone else can see it even in a rough draft form is such an advantage for a founder yeah um just being able to do that communication i think figma is an absolutely essential tool for any kind of startup founder 
Good, good. So then, yeah. So se session 10 will be the, we're building these landing pages. We're going to show them to each other. Um, you're going to get very, very practical guides and tutorials for how to ex execute that. Um, then we're going to launch in session 11 about launching and marketing your landing page. This is going to be a full deep dive into digital marketing, growth marketing, growth hacking, uh, inbound, outbound marketing, email marketing, experiential events or conferences, data analysis, collection, building buzz, analytics. Obviously, this that's a ton to cover in a 20-minute lecture, but we'll be able to have Q&A and share best practices and share different tools about how to do this more effectively in 2022. A lot of the material out there is for how to do it in 2009, the game has completely changed. So we have to be really careful with <laughs> searching for things on the internet because you're gonna get old and outdated material. This is gonna help us derive the most up-to-date potential material for 2022, 2023 and, and, and beyond. All right, so Mike, you wanna talk about session 12? Yeah, so then we're gonna be designing our prototype. So we'll be taking our initial work that we did on our branding and then we're going to start to um, turn this into the actual product. Like what is the product that is based on the idea that you've been testing out? And so we're going to be using our skills in Figma to, um, to actually then be able to create uh, a, a story, UI spec, a UX flowchart, and then starting to get into wireframes so that uh, people can start seeing their idea become a reality. Love it. Then in session 13, we're going to do an internal showcase. Uh, the cohort members, maybe we'll invite in some people that are auditing it um, to do a quick run through of your mockups and prototypes to see, like, just gut check on your product. Does it, does it, are you heading the right direction from a user experience perspective? How are you working with the team to think about actually building this? All sorts of feedback and QA. I think this will be a really, really important session. And then session 14 and 15, we get into pre seed pitch decks, right? And this is really like friends and family. Right. If, you, if you think about the four stages, I think about a lot. Pre-idea, idea, friends and family, and pre-seed. Even at the idea stage, you can pitch for money. A lot of people do that, especially if you've built companies before. You have an idea, you put together a deck, and then you go talk to venture capitalists. With a really great idea, with a great team, you can pull this off. So this is what we're going to teach you to do, how to do it, where in the world to do it. But there's an art form. There's both a science and an art to a pitch deck. We've seen thousands and thousands and thousands of decks. We've seen how those decks that have actually resulted in funding, that have resulted in companies that have shot and got extremely large and successful. And so to reverse engineer that in, in around deck strategy, we're taking a couple sessions to, to walk through all of that. So again, I'm just going to list it out again for people who are listening. Title and tagline, problem, opportunity, solution, founder story, why is now the right time, market sizing your business model, and then the next session we'll be doing competitive, uh, you know, unique advantages, competition, marketing plan, your co-founders and advisors, your validation and your fundraising details. So that we're gonna take two weeks, you're gonna have two or three weeks to basically ar architect your deck, and then we're gonna pitch. We're gonna have a demo day in December, and it's gonna be like the Y Combinator demo days or others, but it's gonna be online, you're gonna be able to invite your friends, and it's gonna be a cool way to uh, showcase in front of a lot of people what you're up to, um, to build more buzz. Again, this will be part of your ideation session is build more buzz, get more people visiting your landing page, filling out their contact information so they can follow along, follow you on social media, et cetera, et cetera, so that you can continue to grow and validate your idea. So, all right, Mike, you wanna scroll back up to the, uh, to the schedule just to confirm so we're, we're doing those first eight, two, you know, the first eight sessions in October. Then we have a November 3rd, November, November 1st, November 3rd, November 8th. Then we skip because we need time to build our landing page. We skip to November 15th. Then we have Thanksgiving. Right after Thanksgiving, we had to do our internal showcase on November 29th. Then we have our couple pitch deck sessions, December 1st and December 6th, leading into our demo day of December 15th. That's the schedule. Glad we can run through that in this podcast so you have more information. Hopefully this gives you, if you're thinking about implying, a much clearer understanding of what we're covering, what sort of sessions you're gonna to wanna to attend in person, what sort of sessions you're gonna to wanna to listen to or watch. 
uh, asynchronously um, as we go through all this content. Mike, anything else that you'd add to the overall sort of approach and syllabus here? Yeah, absolutely. I'd say that um, there are some venture capitalist groups that are just businesses. And what we're doing at Proto is much more of like a startup society where there's a community involved, a network that helps one another. We, we share, we're about generosity. And so no matter where you're at, even if you're like, hey, I'm, I'm so far pre-idea that I'm working on my skills right now, coming in and watching and being a part of this and seeing what's happening, starting to network and seeing like, hey, is there a founder I can help out, right? Like that would be a great place to be. Like if I was in college right now, I would be in an incubator like this and I'd be like, who's the, who's the founder that I think is gonna win here? And I would pick that person. I'd say, hey, what do you need me to do? I'm in. Right. So think about it as, as much broader than than just um, just like, hey, I'm here for some sort of business transaction. It's like we're part of building a community. It's good. All right. So go to protoventures.com, P-R-O-T-A ventures.com. You'll see the link forward slash labs for more details about the incubator and how to apply. You can follow Proto Ventures on Twitter at Proto Ventures, P-R-O-T-A ventures. Find us on LinkedIn, different social media, but it's primarily LinkedIn and Twitter where, where Proda is. And um, yeah, Mike, if people wanted to find you specifically on social media to ask more questions, how, how can they find you? Yeah, on Twitter, I'm uh, at Mikey Anderson, M-I-K-E-Y-A-N-D-E-R-S-O-N. Um, you can also look me up on LinkedIn. Love it. All right, a couple quick things before you go. Number one, I have a general newsletter where I write about technology and startups and health science and teaching people to code. And I write about a variety of different subjects that we talk about on this show. So if you go to wclittle.com, there you'll be able to subscribe and you'll also be able to subscribe to particular topics. If you're just interested in one or a few of them, you'll be notified right when I publish new content in those areas. Number two, my partners and I at Proto Ventures have a portfolio company called Startup Rocket. If you go to startuprocket.com, there you'll be able to receive coaching guides and customize an operations framework for you and your team and your advisors to be on the same page in terms of what is the appropriate next step for you and your entrepreneurial journey. And finally, if you wouldn't mind leaving a review anywhere that you have listened to this podcast or watched this podcast, it would be super helpful to help those who might be interested in consuming this content as well. Thank you.